In the last section, we spent some time to make sure that we had a very reusable button component. So now we can place the button component, pass in a prop of on press, and then whenever the user presses on it, boom, something different is going to happen, which is exactly what we want. So the next thing we need to do is figure out, okay, well, when a user does press this thing, how do we direct them over to their web browser and point them to a very specific URL? So if we were in the browser environment, you know, if we were doing React.js here, we could put in an anchor tag or something like that and just say, okay, anchor tag, whenever someone clicks you, take the user here. There you go. Well, unfortunately with React Native, it's not quite as straightforward as that. There's no concept really of an anchor tag, any way of telling uh, our app to just say like, oh yeah, just automatically pop open a browser. It's a little bit more complicated. Well, it's not that, let me tell you, it's not that much more complicated, but it's not an anchor tag. So whatever, let's just get to it. Let's just get to it. Inside my browser, I'm gonna pop open the React Native documentation. Uh, so you know, here we are. And on the left-hand side, I'll scroll down until I find the section that contains APIs. So here's APIs right here. And I'm looking for a very particular API called linking. So here's linking. So the linking library, which is provided by React Native, is how we kind of interface our application with other apps that are running on a user's mobile device, included in there, the user's browser. So whenever we want to kick a user over to their browser, we can make use of this linking library. And again, you can also read the documentation in here in case you're curious, and you can figure out how to kick the user over to other apps as well. So you might want to kick the user over to Uber so that they can request a ride or their email client so they can write an email or you know, whatever other app the user might have on their device. This is how you interface with it, with the linking library. So for our use case, just sending the user over to a browser, it's not gonna be too bad. Let's check out one method in the docs for this thing. I'm gonna scroll back down and you can find on here, uh, linking library has a method called open URL. And basically, you know, if we want to add a or open up a website web address, we can just call open URL with a plain text, normal vanilla URL, like an HTTP type URL. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. Remember that in our albums object, we've already got the URL to the Amazon store available as the URL property. So basically we need to call linking dot open URL with this URL and we should be good to go. So let's give this a shot. Back in my album detail, I'm gonna go back up to the top and I will import the library linking from React Native. And then where I am destructuring off my album object, I will also pull off the URL property as well. So here's our URL. Now inside of our button, we will replace the console log statement with linking dot open URL and notice that it's capital U, capital R and L. And then we'll just say, yeah, just open that web page right there. Okay, let's give this a shot in our simulator. And I will click the button. Oops. And you'll notice that I got kicked over to amazon.com and my simulator is a little bit laggy right now, but here we go, this music album. And automatically on the top left hand side, I can click back to albums and go back to my application. And I could then go down to the next album, click that one and there we go. Perfect, so this is exactly what we wanted. This is looking really fantastic. I think there's just one last thing we need to do. We need to make sure that our button at the bottom of each card has a little bit better text than just click me. So let's take care of that in the next section. So our app looks pretty great at this point in time. I think there's just one last thing we need to do. We need to make sure that the button's text gets changed to something more reasonable than click me. So we could just change the text to something like by now inside of our button component. And you know, right now here is the hard coded click me. But if we just change it to by now, we're still kind of defeating the purpose of making a reusable button component. So I feel like this would be a great opportunity to pass in the text to show inside this button as a prop to the button. Now there's two ways we could do this. We can either add in a prop, just like the on press one, 
uh, maybe something like, you know, text. And it should say like, buy now. That would be one approach. The second approach that I think might be a little bit, you know, more fun with a button component, you know, something like this, is to use that same props.children trick that we saw earlier. So let's do that instead. If you recall, if we expand out the button tag and then pass some text directly in here, we can then get a reference to this text as props.children inside of the button component. So now we can go back over to our button and replace click me with a reference to props.children. So notice that I don't have a uh, props object or argument here. I'm destructuring out of the arguments uh, list. So I will just destructure out children as well. And then in place of click me, I'll place children. Cool, so let's give this a test. And now we've got a much more reasonable buy now on our buttons, perfect. So again, this is just a step to make sure that we've got a truly reusable component. Our button tag right now is 100% reusable all over the place. It is not tied to the implementation of the card section. And in fact, there is absolutely no reference in here whatsoever to any type of album or URL or artist name or anything like that. So we can definitely make reuse of this in future applications as well. Okay, so I think that's just about it for our first application. I gotta tell you, I'm really happy with how this thing looks. I think it looks really professional. So let's take a little minute in the next section to do a wrap up on all the topics that we spoke about. I know this app took quite a while to build, but like I mentioned several times, React Native introduces many new topics. So for the first time through, we took everything slow, and from here we'll pick up the pace, except, of course, when we cover a new topic. Before we finish this app, I want to discuss some of the major things we learned as we worked our way through it. First, we generated the project using the React Native CLI. This produced a new React Native project capable of running in either the Android or iOS simulators. Next, after we generated the project, we started up the simulator using either React Native Run iOS or React Native Run Android at the command line. Remember, that's how you start your application up in the simulator. Next, once we had our app running, we created quite a few different components. We found out that there were two different types of components inside of React Native. We've got our class-based components, which are components that have access to component level state and lifecycle methods. And then we also have access to functional components which are largely presentational components that just produce some amount of JSX and show some data back to the user. Speaking of state, we use state inside of the album list component. State is a feature of React of available only to class-based components. State is used to record and react to user interactions. So in our case, we fetched a list of albums and then we assigned or updated our state using the set state call. Remember that we only ever update our state object with this.setState. We never do something like this.state equals blah, blah, blah. Because we call set state, our component instantly re-rendered and showed the list of albums that it had retrieved after we made our HTTP request. Next, we created an album detail component by mapping over our list of items. Ah, here it is. So we mapped over our list of items, and for each album we had retrieved, we produced one album detail component. Passing this data, uh, or excuse me, we pass the album to the album detail component by specifying, by specifying a prop. So prop is any type of data that we pass from a parent to a child component. That is the prop system. Finally, we made extensive use of, it, of reusable components inside this application. So we've got our button tag here, we've got our card, we've got our card section, and finally our header. All four of these completely reusable components. And they're so reusable, in fact, that we are going to make use of them on our next project. So we are gonna copy paste these directly over to our next project. So please don't you know, mess around with them too, too much. So this is definitely a nice looking app to start off with. We learned a lot, but there's still a tremendous amount to learn about React Native. So let's continue the next section and start up our next app.